Hello everyone. So in the last episode I finished off this character. Now if you wonder how I got from wherever I was to this, you can probably see some extra videos that I've politely not put in the playlist because they're long and boring. But if you wanted to really get a detailed look at how I modeled this character, this character, you can go ahead and look at those videos. Um, I'm not 100% sure that this is the actual shape I'm going to go with. I'm not real happy about the cant of the body. But um, it'll work for now. I can change the topology later. We're going to be doing UV mapping, or change the shape later. We're going to be doing UV mapping in this episode. UV mapping is a very complicated topic, so I'm going to go ahead and start from the bottom. If you don't have any interest in UV mapping, or if you know enough about it that you're not too worried about missing my incredible insights, go ahead and skip ahead. I'm not a pro UV mapper, so I'm going to teach you how I do it, which is much easier than the um, pixel by pixel method that you probably would want to use if you were doing professional game design. Uh, but basically, the UV map is how a 2D image gets mapped onto a 3D mesh. So one way of doing a UV map, I'm going to go ahead and drag a second window into being here and move this, come on, switch over to the UV image editor. One way of doing UV maps is to just select everything and go unwrap project from view and you end up with this. Now this might be uh, an attractive thing in terms of understanding what it looks like, but the problem is it's actually really bad. Um, for example, these sides here. This, these, these, these faces only have like one pixel width, so we're going to get tons of streaking on the side and we're not going to be able to put any details in. Similarly, the front of the leg and the back of the leg are going to read from the same part of the image, but inverted. So that's no good. What we have to do instead is be much more careful about how we do UV mapping. And the first step is that you want to separate out your character into the pieces that you want to UV map separately. In our case, that's very, very straightforward because we have three materials we plan to use and therefore we can just separate her into three pieces. The first material we want to use is the helmet, which is going to be transparent. So let's go ahead and just grab the helmet. And we want to grab all of the helmet. Uh, we need to be careful not to leave any helmet. There we are. And that ought to be all of the helmet. Just take a quick look here. Uh, yep. We want to grab this one too. And in the front, that will do. There we go. All right. So we've grabbed the helmet and we hit P and separate by selection. And we've now ripped it apart. So if we were to go back into the into the over basic into the basic view here, we've got two pieces, the body and the helmet. Let's go ahead and name them so that we don't lose track. This is the helmet. And this is the body. Come on, this is the body. Alright, so the next step is to go ahead and UV map the helmet. Now this is going to be my basic, I'm going to go ahead and show you the very, very basic idea of UV mapping because the helmet bubble is very, very basic. So it shouldn't be too hard. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and just tell it to unwrap. Boom. And you can see what we've got is we've got this weird shape. So I'm going to describe to you what this shape is. This is the helmet looked down on from above with the hem here stretched out like a donut. And that's because our edge here is what gets separated out. So what do we want to do if we want to have something that doesn't, that doesn't squash and stretch like that? We've got a lot of options. One option is that we can unwrap it as a, um, as a light map pack, which will give us just a set of grids. Um, but that's, uh, that's actually not a bad idea for the helmet, but it's not a good idea for anything else. Another idea is we can do a smart UV project, which will attempt to separate it out automatically. And you can see that this gives us a nice sort of uh, situation where all of the faces are the correct size, but their orientation is crazy, um, and they're not connected via any means. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to split this helmet into a front and a back. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to select this loop across the middle, and we're going to mark it as a seam. Now when we select this helmet and we tell it to unwrap, we get two much more reasonable shapes. And there we are. That's good enough for the helmet because it's just going to be a glass bubble. Let's go back to the body. Let's hide the helmet. The problem with the body is that 
Oh my gosh, it's empty. Well, with the helmet being transparent, we need to fill in the neck. So let's just go ahead and do that. And the best way to do that is to uh, basically grab all of this stuff and bring it over. So extrude, shrink, bring over. And then over here, the only awkward thing is how we're going to handle this corner here. And I think the best way to handle that corner there is to extrude here, shrink, and then go switch over to line mode, grab here, grab here, fill. Is that not correct? Did I screw that up? Okay, well let's go ahead and add in a triangle. I don't really don't really care, and it's clear that that's going to be a bit of a, a wicked edge if we don't. Um, so we don't need these after all. I just made them for no reason. Sorry about that. And let's go ahead and keep filling in here, uh, which we're going to do just by taking this and this, filling in, this and this, filling in, and then we're going to go grab this and this, fill them in, this and this, fill them in, and uh, what do we want to do now? There we go. And we'll, we'll sit the neck when we create one. Oh, did I screw that up somehow? Well, we'll sit the, when we create a neck, we will sit it right here. Um, this is damaged somehow. How did you get damaged? Oh, oh, I see. With I, I had the wrong assumption. Durr. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyhow, that's where the neck will go. And so now we've filled in the area, and that's fine. We don't have to worry about it too much. But this is still two meshes in one. We need to rip it apart. And the way we're going to do that is going to separate, going to separate all of the mechanical pieces from all of the cloth pieces, because we want to have one cloth material and one mechanical plastic metal material. Now, the way that that separates is pretty cleanly, and you can see how we start it here. So let's go ahead and select all of the mechanical components. And uh, we can do that just by looping, uh, grabbing everything like this. Um, there are a lot of, there are probably more efficient ways to grab things, uh, and uh, I don't really know them. The selection methods, are, I always just pick whatever I happen to remember. Um, so if you've got a better way to select things, you're welcome to. I definitely can't recommend this as the best way to do selecting, just box selecting everything bit by bit. It's kind of slow. So the backpack is obviously entirely mechanical. And this is mechanical. And this is mechanical. Come on. Come on. I'm pressing G. I think 99% of my errors and difficulties with this um, is going to be just that I always hit the wrong button. So. Uh, if you will also hit the wrong button, good luck, I feel you. Alright, so this hip area is definitely all mechanical, so let's go ahead and select it. There we go. Now, one thing we have to make sure of, we don't want to accidentally select any of the, uh, any of the crotch, um, which is always a danger when you're doing selections of that sort. But the other thing we need to keep aware of is that with our two sides, we don't want to... Well, we could actually go ahead and delete half of this now that I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. That would make my job so much easier. Oh, I forgot to... Since it's exactly the same on both sides, this is not an issue, but we don't want that trailing vertex. Yeah, that's fine. Let me add modifier mirror. Now, I think that might have actually... Yeah, we lost lost the faces in there, but that's fine. We'll reestablish them when we, uh, when we separate it out. So let's go ahead and separate it out. So as I was doing before... <sighs> I told you this is going to be slow. Sorry about that. We 
definitely want these. All right, that's most of it done. Let's go ahead and do the hip again. I think that's everything. There's a couple of pieces up here that we'd like. Mm, I don't think we actually want those pieces. I thought maybe they would be good, but I don't think we want them. There we go. We want that one. And we will take all of this interior. There we go. Uh, is there anything missing? No, oh, I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and uh, punch it. Boom. So now we have a body and we also have a backpack. So if we were to hide the backpack, we can see that this body uh, doesn't have some pieces, but the backpack doesn't have other pieces, and that's how it'll do. So everything we've got here will be rendered as a cloth, and everything in the backpack will be rendered as, well, backpack. But right now we have mirror modifiers applied, so let's uh, go ahead and actually apply those mirror modifiers. Like so. And now we have perfect meshes of everything we need to do. So how are we going to go ahead and UV map these pieces? Well, let's go ahead and start with the body, and there's a good reason for that. The reason is I wanted to show you the feet. Feet uh, will actually give you a really good example of why UV mapping is so important uh, and how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and separate out uh, the foot UV map from the rest of the body, which we're going to do. Um, we could do it at the edge of the spat here, but I'm actually going to do it up here at the edge of this uh, yeah, that's probably a good place to do it. And the reason I'm doing it there is because uh, it's going to be less noticeable when you're looking down at the character, and you're always going to be looking down at the character. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the seams, but more importantly, everything below that seam is going to be foot. So if I were to go ahead and tell it to unwrap, we've got the same problem we had with the helmet. We've got these massive, massive uh, 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 things where the whole foot has been stretched out. This outer line is actually the ankle. <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. The toes are these tiny little clusters in here. So we obviously need to fix this up. And the way to do that is simply to cut it. But there are two cuts, or three cuts, that we need to make rather than just one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rip off the soles of the feet. Now the soles of the feet are going to be their own um, piece. So if we were to select these now, including this part here and this part here, now when we hit unwrap, you're going to see that we get the soles of the feet as their own very easily recognizable shape. But even with that, the feet are still going to be awkward because we're still going to be doing some crazy stuff. So let me show you that. No, don't do that. There we are. Uh, we still have this really weird looking shape that definitely doesn't remind anyone anywhere of a foot. The way to fix that is to do a vertical uh, cut. So we're going to cut along one of these pieces here, and I think we're going to go ahead and cut along this. And again on the other side. Yep, so if we mark the seams there, or the seams, there it is. Now, when we select the feet, you can see that we have something that looks like a foot. Now, it's still kind of stretched. Um, the toes, in particular, are pretty stretched. If we wanted to fix that, there are a lot of ways to do so. Uh, one of the things that I've seen people do before is they'll run a cut down here. But that's okay. I don't really need any detail on the toes of the foot in particular. So I'm going to leave it like this. But you are welcome to go ahead and fix it up however you'd like. Let's go ahead and continue. So here you can see that we've got this nice line that runs up to the edge on both sides of the leg. 
Now we could add a seam here, um, but the problem is it actually does a lot of stuff we don't want it to do. One is cut across the foot, and another is cut this pouch in half. You don't want to put the seams anywhere where, they'll, where they will be noticed because um, the seams don't have any continuation across them. Uh, I mean, if we look at what we've got here, we can't paint anything from here and expect it to appear on the leg because it won't. The leg won't be here. Um, and that means that you, when you put the seam in, you've got to put it in a place where it won't be noticed or where there won't be any continuous mesh. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just run the seam up the inseam, the inseam here. Very few people will look at the inside of the leg with that much detail. Um, and, uh, uh, and it's okay if there's a seam here because there's actually an in-world seam here. So that's just fine. The only problem is we can't really use a loop grab to get it because the loop continues on for so long in every other direction. Oh, I missed. Now we're going to go ahead and mark the seam. So now we need to actually have these legs get unwrapped properly. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to uh, mark a seam at the top of the legs. And then normally that would be this seam here. But you can see that we've got a complication because our seam actually uh, is not complete. We're interrupted by the metallic object that is uh, our, our hip mount. Now we could go across here. That would be the loop cut. That would be a good way to continue the loop cut properly. But this isn't a loop cut situation. We want it to continue here because otherwise we would be creating a break when we don't need one. There's no reason to have a break in the UV map at that moment. Um, but there is something we do need to do. Let's hide that so I can see what I'm doing. There we are. There we go. So that is a cut across the top of the legs. Um, yeah, I guess that'll work. I'm not too happy about where that falls on the spacesuit, but I guess I guess that'll be okay. So we mark that seam. So now, if we were to select everything and unwrap it, we still have some crazy stuff going on, but our legs here are pretty recognizable. You can see that they're not too small. Um, so we have the pouch attached to the legs as a very clear landmark. And you can see that we have these, it does grow smaller and smaller as it gets, uh, I believe that's down towards the ankle. Yeah. Um, but you can see that on the other leg, it gets larger and larger down towards the ankle. So we've got something awkward. Oh, no, wait, that's just the foot. I was lying. Was I? No, I was right. So we've got something very awkward going on here where one of the legs uh, gets smaller towards the ankle and the other one gets larger towards the ankle. And that's because these are not properly... Um, broken apart. So let's go ahead and see whether or not clearing the seam at, at this in these two lines is going to be enough to fix that problem. Because they should be identical since they are laid out identically. Oh, it might have just been that we didn't get the whole mesh. Let's try that again. Alright, so you know we still have the problem where one of the legs doesn't have the... Uh, one of the legs appears to not be slicing correctly. We might have just missed a patch of seam somewhere. Oh yeah, we did. There's the problem. All right, so that should that should probably fix it. Let's go ahead and try it. There we are. Now the legs are now the legs are the same. Um, although they're flipped across the x-axis, that's fine. And you can see that here is where the metal piece begins and here is the pouch. And here is, I believe, the ankle. Let's go ahead and just double check that. Yep. So we now need to make it so that the body works. Now, as you can see, the body uh, actually doesn't look too awful. It's one of these shapes over here, but it's still got this really awkward shape where it's like grabbed and stretched awkwardly. So where are we going to put the seam for that? We're actually going to run it up the back, and the reason for that is because there's a backpack on this model, so we don't need to worry too much about people seeing what's underneath the backpack. So we're going to grab here and here, and we're basically going to cut apart uh, this back strap and make it a separate object, or a separate UV mapping uh, system. Uh, so now when we go to select the body, 
we unwrap, I just marked the seam, didn't I? No, I didn't. Good. When we unwrap, uh, you can see that what we've got is this is the body, and here's the front, and then here is between the legs, and then here's the back. And we could, of course, uh, cut anywhere we would like, and the best place to cut would be where I uncut before, because I was trying to debug. Um, so we mark that seam there. Now when we unwrap, the body and the back patch are separate. So here's the back patch, and here's the body. And that's fine. Those work out. The arms are now the last remaining place where we have trouble. And you can see they've got these awkward concentrations. And of course, hands are always going to be a real pain in the ass. So what are we going to do? Well, the real issue is always going to be these fingers. So the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out how you're going to deal with the fingers. I don't happen to know of any decent way to do this. Um, I'm sure that there is a trick to fingers, but I've never actually needed my fingers to be in high quality, uh, so I've never actually went and looked. What I normally do is I slice on the underside of each finger. So I cut it open from the tip down this way. And of course the reason for that is because the part of the finger that no one will ever see is the part that's busy holding, you know, a gun or whatever. But what do you do now? Well, I go ahead and cut across here like this. And then I basically cut out the whole inner thumb. Don't be awkward, Mr. Camera. Like so. Um, now there are a lot of things you can do here. One option is to make it so that the thumb is part of the palm, so half of the thumb would be on the palm part of the mesh, or the texture, and the other half wouldn't be. But I don't like that idea. I like my thumb to be its own uh, part on the mesh. I don't need it to be um, attached to the, uh, to the palm quite that aggressively. So after having sliced open the thumb, I actually don't put the thumb in this particular patch, and instead I continue down here and I can't see very well. I think this is it, yeah. The topology of this hand is not ideal. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Do we have the proper connections? No, we don't. Um, so the problem is that the thumb is folded in on itself. There we go. That, that looks like it's correct. All right. If not, no biggie. So we can then mark the seams here. But we still have the rest of the arm left to cut. So I'm going to cut it on the underside of the arm, like this. But you can see that it flies across the thumb and the finger. It's always tempting to use that as an actual cut across the thumb and the finger. But as I said, that's not the best place to cut the thumb and the finger. You're much better off doing it like I did it or something else. Let's go ahead and grab this. Oh, wow, that mesh looks really ugly from beneath. Whatever. And then we're going to actually go ahead and just cut across here and mark that mesh, mark that seam. So now, when we select everything, do we have a missing? No, it's just awkwardly. That's fine. Now when we do the fingers, you can see that we've got these fingers all have their own cut open mesh like so. And there is some stretching and some squashing happening there. And if that bothers you, then it's easy enough to, uh, you can, for example, cut the hand off and give it its own object like I did. Uh, another option is to use uh, UV, a different kind of UV um, projection, for example. So if we wanted to, we could take the hand, uh, Z here. If we wanted to, we could take just the hand and use a smart UV map like this. And that would give us a situation where you can clearly see each of the fingers. And that's probably better. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to separate the hand out from the forearm. And I've already created the start of that right here, as you can see, which is finish it off by marking the seam. And the reason we want to mark the seam there is just because um, it, for our own use, we can see quite clearly where the hand ends. Now, unfortunately, I've only been doing one side. Um, so I now have to do the other side. Make sure that I pick the same spot. Yeah. Mark the seam. 
and across the inside here. Now all of that work I did cutting apart the hand, I don't think it's actually going to matter because I think that the Smart UV Project actually ignores what you've marked as a seam. We can test that out by grabbing each hand. More police sirens, just in case you didn't have enough of them. And just checking and seeing whether or not they Smart UV Project in the same manner. Yeah. Um, actually, that's really awkward. It looks like they... I'm not sure what's going on with the smart UV project in this hands. Maybe that's not the best way to do it. No, I can't imagine that would have done jack shit. We could always do a light map pack. Um, it might be best to actually do it the way I was doing it, with the cutting open. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, sorry, the hands are always annoying, especially since I don't need them. Uh, so let's go ahead and run the uh, same thing we did before. New, 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 new. But previously what we did is we made it like this, and the end result was that um, we had very dense uh, stretched meshes uh, for the UV map. We had a dense stretched UV map for the mesh. One of those words. Whatever. Words. Um, I can't remember how I did this. Definitely didn't do it like that. And then I ran it through this really awful indented area that shouldn't exist. The problem is that the thumb is so badly designed that it's it's awkward. Now I don't really care about making the hands perfect, but I don't want I don't want them to stretch. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to define a few more um, cuts, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off each finger, and that will really reduce the stretch involved. So I'm going to take this part and just extend it all across the back of the hand. Mark the seam. And I need the seam here too. Yep. So now, uh, hold on, there you are. When we actually unwrap that hand, we get. Well, they're all overlapping for some reason. They shouldn't be overlapping like that. If I got a problem with the. Ah, uh, the thumb is the problem. Well, whatever. We'll go ahead and repeat the process over here. All right, you. Let's finish you off. It's okay if you suck. I don't really care. Oh, this is probably the problem, now that I'm looking at it. Oh! Huh. I didn't connect it. Maxine. Alright, so now, we we'll grab the whole body, unwrap the whole thing, and you can see that we've got this setup here, where everything is nicely separated out, except for the fingers, which have all been put into giant madness. Um, and I think that's because the uh, cuts are not between the fingers. I think if I separate the fingers... No, not like that. Oh, 
and then do the same on the other side. I'm having a hard time with the camera all of a sudden. Come on, camera. Behave a little bit better for me, would you? Why can't the camera read my mind? It needs to be able to read my mind. All right, so that'll do. Mark seam. Grab everything. Unwrap. Unwrap. There we go. Now you can see our fingers are all separated. And they're slightly stretched, but it's no biggie. So this UV map here is, um, I wouldn't call it good, but it is decent enough that we can go ahead and manipulate it a little bit until we like the way it ends up looking. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab all of these fingers and put them all in the same spot. We do not need details for these fingers, so um, we're going to go ahead and make sure they're nice and small. Here is the fingers and the palms. Just drag them all up there for the moment. And now we're going to go ahead and arrange all of this stuff so that it is uh, more or less uh, how we would like it to be. So that means that we've got this foot over here, and this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so let's go ahead and grab it. and drag it over to where the other foot is. I'm not sure what this is. Might be a piece of spat. No, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I bet it. this is the palm. The other one was the back of the hand. All right, so here's more stuff for the hand pile. And you can actually determine that sort of thing by selecting different parts on the mesh, and it will only show down here the parts you've selected on the mesh. So now we hit the big question of what do we want to do with the rest of this stuff. So here we have a leg, but you can see that the leg is tilted in a different direction than the other leg. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it and bring it more or less into an even keel. The problem is it's never going to be perfect because when you do it, when you do an unwrap like I did it, it's an opportunistic unwrap, which means that it, it's definitely not guaranteed to always have the same idea. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't have any x-axis. Um, um, there's no x-axis. Uh, the mirroring doesn't hold up here. So while we have the same shape, it's not the same result. Here you can see these are the arms. And those are more or less correct, but this top one is a little bit distorted. Um, I'm going to go ahead and live with that for now. And you got the feet, you got the back, the back is perfect. And this guy here is a troublesome little piece um, because it's rotated. And out of all of the pieces, we don't want this one rotated. All of the other pieces we can live with if they're rotated. But this is the front of the body, and it's going to have like logos and shit on it. so. We need this to be even. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring this foot over to the other foot. And you can see that they're slightly different sizes. I'll bring this foot, the sole. Come on. these fingers. Oh, no, no. All right, so this is a nice, easy thing to move, so let's move it. And then we're going to go ahead and put all of these guys in a giant cluster. Um, let's go ahead and arrange them over here. shrink them all down. 
the scale x negative 1. There we go. And that fits them in nicely. We can put the back anywhere we want it. I'm going to put it down here. Now all we have left is the fact that these feet don't quite fit. Well, that's okay. Let's go ahead and grab them. Move them over here. Rotate, negative 90. And they still don't quite fit. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, the problem is I want to move this foot that's on the left above, like so and then rotate it 45 degrees. Uh, maybe 90 degrees would be better. No. There, something like that. And then grab this foot. Rotate it 90 degrees. I don't really care about the feet at this point. Um, this is something where you can go back and remap everything you'd like later on if you discover that you've made some horrible mistake. So this is how I'm going to leave it for the moment. Now, there are a lot of other ways to do I want to stress that this is just one way to approach it, and it's just a way to do it pretty quick while still maintaining some level of quality. Um, if we were going to be doing this uh, uh, in a more professional style, we would probably separate more parts out and do it in a more complicated way. But I don't really want to teach you how to do that. After all of that, we still have a problem where we haven't mapped out this at all. So let's go ahead and hide the body, hide the head, and work on this. So the reason that this needs special mention is because, first off, we have to do a little bit of repair work. that not work? Why are you selected there in the background? There we are. All right, so the reason that this needs special mention is just because it's got a lot of topological gotchas. It's very complicated. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate out the backpack from its support units. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to mark these connections as a seam. But as we saw before, that means that it will open, it will like unwrap, and these will turn into these giant pseudopods. Except that's not true. Let's take a look. So these are the things we just cut apart. And you can see that it didn't actually expand at all. Quite the opposite. We've got it contracting it down here. So the basic situation is that um, there is this giant open area down here. So all we really need to do is run the seam uh, down to this open area. And in order to do that, we want to pick one of these two lines. And the line we want is the one that the player is going to see less, and that would be the one that is inside towards the body. So let's mark these seams. And now, damn it. Unwrap. There we go. And that's much cleaner, as you can see. So that means that we can now move on to the parts that are still causing us problems, which is the big central part. So let's go ahead and mark some seams. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate the backpack from the rest of the body, which will uh, save us a lot of trouble. So we'll just mark that as a seam. No, no, no. This. Are you all the way around? I think you are. Yeah, yeah, you are. So I'll mark that as a seam. But the backpack itself uh, is still going to be uh, having some awkward, um, an awkward shape to it. So we're going to go ahead and rip it apart a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to actually just go straight up the back here. But you can see that that also rips apart the other part of the mesh in here. Normally I would be like, well, you should probably you know, not just follow the loop cuts. But in this case, that's actually a really good loop cut. So we're going to leave that. However, we don't need it cutting here. So let's deselect these. There, mark seam. We do want to make sure that these don't interfere, so we're going to put them in their own little world by marking a seam right here. 
and uh, we're going to go ahead and separate out the inside of the head area from the outside by just following these seams. So then we mark them. And uh, we need to cut here if we wanted to actually make these continue. So let's go ahead and cut there. It's not the best place to cut, but it's OK. We'll live with it. And the last thing we want to do is what are we going to do about this front area? Well, let's just go ahead and see how it looks when we unwrap it as is. And you can see that the front area is, I believe this is it. No, wait, that's the head. Um, this is it. The front area is here. You can see where the arms poke through. And that it's actually not too bad. So, you know, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, these are all fine. The only thing that I've got a problem with is that some of this stuff is rotated and I don't want it to be. In particular, this, um, which is the... is this the neck? If that's the neck, then... oh, this is the backpack. I see, I see. It doesn't matter if the neck is rotated, so that's all fine. So basically, we finished our UV mapping. And we can always export the UV layout, which is something you're going to want to do um, so that you can actually paint it in the way you want to paint it. Uh, but that's it for today, and I'll see you tomorrow.